Manic Street Preachers on BBC Radio Ulster. It's just great to say that James Dean Bradfield is sitting in front of me in the beautiful sun-kissed surroundings above us, wiping a little sweat from the brow there, James. It's a, a hot day, sweat. isn't it? Yes, a it little is. bead of sweat. Sultry. A sultry Belfast. Yeah. And it's not always sultry every time you've been here. I'm sure you've seen <laughs> worse weather than this. Uh, welcome back to Belfast, James. Always great to see the Manics back in town. You love coming to Ireland. I know that. And it's a yes. long-term relationship, isn't it? And yeah, it is, yeah. I mean... Uh, I think when we released Motown Junk uh, in 91, you know, Belfast was nearly at the top of the list of the places we wanted to play. And I saw yeah. you in Korean yeah. University. Uh, around, right. around you were at that gig? I was at that gig, yeah. That was an amazing gig because there was hardly anybody there. Mm, well, it was, it was a minimalist mm, turnout, but uh, everyone 20? who was there wanted to be there. I was, and they were just, and kind of, uh, I remember there was, there was this uh, troop of girls, about five girls, all dressed up in our kind mm. of like, you know, Kind of like a rebel, the Manix look. rebel chic yeah. kind of thing, and uh, kind of, and they were brilliant. They were actually, I don't even want to sound condescending because I'm not. They were just such inspiring kind of like girls. They were brilliant, yeah. and they ignored the fact that they were in this cavernous leisure centre and there was 20, 30 people there <laughs> tops, and you know they made us. It was our first experience of not many people being somewhere, but it being worth us just being there for those people, which sounds overly earnest, but it was true. It was a big lesson to us. But the Manic Street preachers, James, and I've always felt this. You've built built that audience and you've built it through honesty and through trust between fans and bands and not everybody has that connection a lot of bands like to be aloof and away from the fans but the Manics have built an audience haven't they over the, over the decade and a half we have yeah I mean kind of, we've never kind of gone over the top with the touchy feely thing of fan clubs or anything like mm. that um, but kind of I think we were always struck by kind of that Pete Townsend statement about the Who is just like he said that if you don't think like one of your fans anymore then you won't connect with them at all mm. um, and we've you know, there are times when, can I say, during the Everything Must Go era, or uh, this is my truth, tell me yours era, where we were selling, you know, you know, you know million and a half records in Britain alone, mm. kind of thing, where you can become detached from what makes your band tick and, let, and, and know how your audience connects with you. And sometimes it goes wrong and you've got to reconnect with it, you know. I mean, that's what Pete Townsend did with Quadrophenia, with the Who. He was trying to reconnect with the reason why the, his audience had liked you know his music in the first place and you've got to bear that in mind otherwise you are just a showpiece you know mm. you're just a trophy cabinet um and so i think it all helps that we all live close to where we we grew up you know um i spent my time in london then i moved back to wales and i think it's just really helped that we're all kind of very so connected to the area that we, we grew up in i think and there is that that connection here was well, a celtic thing anyway isn't it but there's a connection with ireland that goes back before we we came on air you were mentioning a few of the old venues here down the years and you've always loved coming over here and there has been a, a connection with audiences in this part of the world we did yeah uh, but we did appreciate the difference you know differences in, in different the different reactions you get from different towns when you played you know, you know, uh, kind of like the the difference in the Belfast and the Cold Rain gig that you talk about in mm -hmm. '91. There was a difference in the audience, you know. And uh, and when we crossed the border for the first time in '91, which was a very different experience back then, you know, we really, you know, we were very aware that every city you came across, you had to treat in a very individual manner, kind of thing. Yeah, you, know, you can't just look at Wales and assume that Swansea yeah. is going to be the same, same as Swansea. Yeah. No, you know, they're very different audiences. And so we were very careful to be like that when we came to Ireland. But of course, we're, the Belfast was omnipresent in our minds just for the fact that actually so much good music came out of Belfast. You know, mm. it really did. You know, we were doing kind of like covers of, you know, Gotta Get, Gotta Get Away mm. by SLF and Teenage Kicks and, and stuff, you know, in our set early on. So you were on. always aware of that history? The, yeah. The you know, kind of good knew, vibrations, the kind of Terry yeah. Hooley history here. You knew that? Yeah, yeah, we knew that you know, Belfast was a musical city, you know. And whether, you know, but, you know, you know, could it be from Van Morrison before? Well, just be right, like Brendan Behan as well, you know. Mm. We were aware of all the culture that came out of Belfast. Good man, James. Listen, I'm not going to keep you back because you're a busy man. Although you're very calm, you kind of cruise in and just... Oh, you know, no, it's kind of... A, before, an hour before I go on stage, I become... Slightly frantic. I become terminally kind of existentialist. <laughs> <laughs> good, I do, so. Good man. Listen, a slightly different thing for the Manics tonight. Uh, yeah. Nicky's not with you today, so... No, his mum has... His mum has been seriously ill for a long time. Um, so he, he just couldn't come away for this concert, you know. And he's, he's kind of gutted because we haven't played Belfast for quite a while now. Mm. Um, even though we've played Belfast so much in our careers, we haven't been here for quite a while, five years or so, I think. So, but, it's, you know, family does come first, and he was advised that he couldn't come away for this oh, one. Well said, family does come first, and we give, spend, send our best wishes to, to Nicky and the family as well. Nicky, we're not here today, but the man is in full flow tonight. James, enjoy it. I know you will. You always will. do. Good to see you, mate. Cheers, Thank fella. you so much. James, James going back out into the sunshine. Thank you. Lucky James, I'm stuck in a little porta cabin here for the next couple of hours, oh, but you, thank you, you so you're much. Up, you're tanning up, I can tell I'm you. I'm tanning up inside. <laughs> I've got a studio tan going on here. James Dean Bradfield, always great to have him on BBC Radio Wall Street. The man
Connick Street Preachers tonight. Really special thing. Listen.